this starting line, if you guys have had together since um, four and Karras went to the point, you know, the offensive rating is really high. What, what do you think is clicking about the five of you in particular being together? Um, I think probably the fact that we've all been together for a while um, has something to do with it. You know, we know how to play off of each other. We know where uh, each particular guy's strengths are. And, uh, you know, we kind of just play around that and we're able to be pretty efficient offensively. Brian? When you're uh, dealing with a defense that's as athletic and as long as Toronto is and forces turnovers the way that they do, um, how do you have to, I guess, attack that? I mean, how do you find ways to find mismatches in there when there don't seem to be any? Um, you know, obviously Toronto is one of the better defensive teams in the league. Uh, they really hang their hat on on the defensive end, just making things tough on guys. Um, you know, they throw a lot of different sort of schematics and matchups at you. But for us, it's really more about continuing to try and play the way that we've been playing. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to break these guys down one on one initially. You know, you're going to have to move the ball, move yourself. Uh, you know, take shots when they're there. They can test uh, out to the three-point line really well, run guys off the line. Uh, but I think it's about just, you know, continuing to make simple plays and being aggressive. You know, you got to be the aggressor. Obviously, they, they do well defensively because they're usually the aggressive team on that end, but we have to match it. Alex? Hey, Joe, I, I got two for you. Uh, you know, just with the way Toronto is so so balanced, is there a guy in your eyes that's the kind of the guy that the straw that stirs the drink for them, whether that's Lowry or Siakam, or is it they really spread out in, in that sense? And, and second, on a lighter note, you being the, the foodie on the team, a lot of NBA players have been talking about this place called Siena's they've gotten from in the bubble. I'm just curious if that's been on your radar or come across it, I should say. Um, first question, I think uh, – you know, it's too hard to just pinpoint on one particular guy. I mean, they have so many great players. I would say, though, Kyle has been there, you know, the longest, and he definitely seems to be sort of the vocal, emotional leader of their team, and he really gets them going with just the intensity and aggressiveness that he plays with. And then second question, no, I have not eaten that. Um, I forgot the name of what you said, Sienna's or whatever it is. Christian? Hey, Joe, quick question for you. Uh, you know, with, with there being no fans in the arenas, uh, some players are saying that referees can hear them a little bit more clearly, which is why there appears to have been an uptick, uh, an uptick in technical fouls in the bubble. Um, and the other players are saying that they can hear kind of like trash talk going on. Do you, is there anything that you kind of notice with no fans in terms of communication that's different uh, now versus back when, when you're playing in a packed arena? Uh, for me personally, I don't really notice it a ton. I think there's always – pretty consistent dialogue between you and the refs. And just because the fans, that doesn't mean you can't hear it. Um, and the same thing with the players too. Greg? Uh, Joe, I imagine that Toronto is going to do everything they can to get the ball out of Karras' hands. Uh, so what do you guys have to do in terms of ball movement to kind of take some of the pressure off of him? Um, I think, you know, obviously they are definitely going to load up and key in on Karras, uh, and we know that. And uh, the other guys are going to have to step up, be aggressive, make shots. But then also I think if we do well defensively, we'll be able to hopefully get out in transition, allow Karras to get out in space, and let him operate that way. Last question, Grady. Hey, Joe, what, did, what for you did you take away from last year's postseason experience mentally? I know these are different circumstances, but what did you take away from the experience a year ago that you think will help you from an experience standpoint this go round? I think the sole fact is just experience. I think being able to you know, know what the playoffs feel like, what the intensity is like, being there before, you know, that, that helps a lot, you know, and for a lot of us last year, it was um, our first time in significant roles in the playoffs. And now the second time around, uh, J.A., myself, Karis, uh, Rogi, you know, we, they, we're able to combine with the, the veteran guys like Garrett and some of the other guys, um, Jabal, that have had a lot of uh, playoff experience, which, um, you know, it just helps. I mean, experience is the best teacher.